This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going into the lab with, you know, different bubbling beakers and microscopes and people with lab coats. Because today we're trying to get out of the lab actually, because we're trying to exit the game, the secret lab. This is a series from Cosmos. This is their sort of escape room in a box size series. This is the third that's coming out. They're all coming out in a wave. Uh, there's one called the Abandoned Cabin, then the Pharaoh's Tomb, and then this. I've already reviewed the other two, so check the descriptions in this video. I put the links there to those reviews. How does this one, you know, what is this one like? Is it hard? Is it easy? Uh, so it's for one to six players, just totally cooperative. Let me show you how it's played. I'm going to do it without spoiling it. So no spoilers here. I'm just going to show you a little bit how the mechanisms work, and then I'll be on the other side to hear my final thoughts. the main components of their game. Now there may or may not be some other ones that I'm not going to show you, but this is the book that comes with and inside this book will give you sort of different types of clues and different things you'll be using when you're trying to fig figure out the riddles. Now here are the riddle cards. There's actually 24 cards here in this game. Uh, they're all lettered and, and these are going to be the ones that are puzzles or parts of puzzles. You're going to be using this wheel. Depending on the, the specific riddle that you're going for, you'll be using this wheel to spin different things to get things to line up. So for example, if a circle I think the answer is that, I would then look at this, this says 26, I would look at the answer card 26 to see if I'm right, if I'm wrong, or if I'm on the right track. A few different things could happen. I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm going to show you some different things that might happen. Now I did not pull card number 26, but I've covered the card number so you can't see. It might just say, hey, you're wrong. Put this back on the deck and you're definitely wrong. Or it might say, hey, depending on the clue and the puzzle that you're working on, it's going to relate to one of these pictures. And depending on that picture, you're then going to get that card number. And that could be a wrong, it could be a right, it could say grab some more real cards. So that's sort of how the engine of this game works. But then for each of the puzzle types, now remember all these different shapes are the ones that you're finding on the wheel so you're knowing which puzzle you're trying to put the right code or colors in for. And for each of these, there's three different cards. There's a first clue, which basically just tells you if you want to get this clue, uh, you know, you can get it, but you know, you're going to subtract some points at the end of the game. This definitely usually tells you which cards of the riddle cards do you actually need? How much information do you even need to start solving this puzzle? Second one is, okay, you've got all the information you need, let's help you a little bit further. And if you're totally stuck, it can give you a solution if you're really stuck there. Now, you don't want to use these uh, at all if you can because it does change your score at the end of the game. Let me show you how that works. And at the end of the game here, on the left side, depending on how much time you take, and on the top, how many of those help cards you actually use. If you take a help card and you actually knew everything on it, it doesn't count. But if you used at least one piece of information, it counts. So you take up the amount of cards at the end, the amount of time, and you get a certain amount of stars between 1 and 10. All right, well, there's Exit the Room, the Secret Lab. Now, I've already gone in a most depth of the actual system itself and what I think about it in the abandoned cabin review. So in the description below, just go ahead and click that, go to the final thoughts and you can see what I think about the system itself. But just briefly, uh, basically this system's awesome. It's, they take all, they give you a lot with a little, you know, you're just getting some cards, sometimes some components and this time it's a few components. And they're able to make it so that it's just really cool that they can do so much with it. The wheel is something that we've seen before in other uh, companies doing these types of things, but it works well. The system itself is great. I actually really love it, but I go into more detail there in the abandoned cabin. So if you want to learn a little bit more about what I think about the system, go to that review. Now specifically about this secret lab. So this one, I'd say the difficulty is, is hard. Um, it's, it, it was a little bit harder than the abandoned cabin, but not as nearly as hard as the Pharaoh's tomb. So I think this is a good one where I still think you should do the abandoned cabin first uh, and then do this one second. Uh, and then if you want to try to tackle the Pharaoh's tomb, do that. Now this one had some, as you saw, you know, that there's, or maybe actually I didn't even show that. There, there are some things in here that are pretty interesting. Uh, this one uh, has, how do I say this without spoiling it, has some puzzles that, you know, they're, as you can imagine, it's about formulas and beakers and things like that. Um, it, it might be good for our brains because I'm an engineer, my, some of my friends are engineers. And so this one we, we tackled and, and, and we enjoyed it. Uh, the puzzles themselves, 
they're good. They're, they're, they're challenging. Some of them we got right away. Some of them we struggled, had to get some clues. But I'm gonna warn you that there was one puzzle that really threw us off and mostly because there was a misprint. It didn't ruin the game for us. We actually had the answer correct without being thrown off, uh, but we weren't smart enough to think of another clue from another thing. I don't wanna spoil it. Uh, but I will tell you it is Riddle Card Q and it's when you're trying to solve the one that looks like a starburst. Uh, the second clue card there, uh, there's a little bit of a misprint. It will kind of send you astray. You'll still get the right answer if you kind of go through and figure all the things out. So it's not like it doesn't break the game. They are going to fix it in a future print run, but just be known that the second clue in the starburst um, might throw you for a loop. So just, you know, take some extra time with it. Go look at the, there's a, I think there's an article on the BGG that they're going to post about that. But anyway, uh, that, that one really kind of threw us for a loop. But other than that, uh, there were some, there are some tough ones. There are some ones that we had to use some clue cards. I believe we used three clue cards here. We got about six stars in this one out of 10. Um, and it took us an hour and 45 minutes. So we didn't blow through it. Uh, it. It was longer than the first one, but not as long as the Pharaoh's Tomb. Uh, but I, overall, I enjoyed it. it. It did not have, actually it had one. It had one time where we're like, Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Where the other ones had, I think, two times each time. So this one was good. It was solid. It was what I would have expected from this series. Uh, it wasn't my favorite one, but it wasn't the worst one either. This one's kind of middle of the road, but a middle of the road one for this series is a positive thing. And a middle of the road one is you should absolutely buy it because this series as a general is excellent. And these things are only $14.95 retail, probably $10 online. And it's, whoa, way more than $10 value did I think we get out of this. So this one's great. If you like the theme, it's going to speak right to you. Uh, it was a little harder, but it was doable. So hour 45 for us. And this is definitely one, if you like the series, like Escape Rooms, this one's a no-brainer, especially at the price point. Now, this, these ones are, last thing I'm going to say is these ones tend to be legacy style. You're ripping things up. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're altering things. You're writing on things. This one, if you're careful, um, you can, if you have a copier, a color copier and some extra pens and stuff, you can do this one and not destroy it or alter it. So you probably could pass this one on. So uh, you just have to be careful. It takes more time. You're probably going to want to stop as you make copies, stop the timer and such. But you can. I know a lot of people have been emailing me asking me, can you do it without it? This one you can. Uh, the abandoned cabin you can. The pharaohs, you can almost do all of it and a little thing so but i'll talk more about this in a summary video i'm going to do of all three of these coming out sometime soon so that is the secret lab this video was sponsored by miniature markets review corner the review corner features podcasts video and written game reviews by gamers for gamers miniature market the online gaming superstore thousands of board games discounted prices check them out at miniaturemarket.com <laughs>